Well, Jennifer, I just want to thank you for, um, first of all, being able to talk to me today. Sure. Um, I want to talk to you about Jenna, about Hannah, and um, just go over a little bit about her background information and get to know her better as a person before I actually do the assessment. Um, I think it's really critical that we talk about um, what happened to her maybe in her medical okay. history, mm -hmm. um, what you know about that, and um, so if you don't mind talking to me about that. Sure, no. Um, so what, what is Hannah's medical history? Um, she, this was an injury from birth. Her umbilical cord was around her neck twice. Um, she had apneic episodes after she was born. Um, when uh, they took me in for an emergency cesarean um, and she started having apneic episodes and then about four hours after she was born she had a seizure and um, that sort of snowballed into everything. Uh, she was life flighted from where we, we lived in Petersburg at the time and uh, they life flighted her to Morgantown and uh, they did EEGs and CAT scans and um, said that she wouldn't live 10 minutes and she's now six years old uh, and she has cerebral palsy, she has cortical vision impairment and she does have seizures which are controlled with her medicine um, and you know every day is a new day. So. so she's just a big blessing in your life. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, and um, so Hannah um, is seen at the Eye Institute. Yes, uh, okay. mm -hmm. Dr. Bradford. Okay. Um, and um, she um, she has vision services. Yes. She, vision. Mm -hmm. okay. she was in the Insight program till she was five, okay. and then uh, she gets vision services through school. Okay. In addition to her CVI, do you know um, if she has any other ocular components? Uh, she is nearsighted. Okay, she's also um, nearsighted. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she does she does have glasses for that, but um, he said that um, if she if they were more of a fuss to put on her or to leave them on her, since with CVI you're not you know you're not supposed to be able to see very far away anyhow that if they weren't making a big difference, then she really didn't have to wear them. So she doesn't wear glasses? No. Okay. And you tried this for a while? Oh, yeah, and for several years. No. Oh, for several years, you yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. What grade is she in now? She is in kindergarten this year. Okay. How's she doing in school? Better this year versus preschool. Uh, just a quieter environment and less stimulating. Okay. So, so uh, what's the classroom setting like for her in school um, right now? She's uh, 70, 70, 30, uh, 70 percent special ed setting, 30 percent uh, regular ed setting. Um, the classroom has about 10 other kids, uh, her, special, her special needs classroom. Um, it's a very busy room, but we were able to adapt, we were able to be more flexible with this room versus last year with 20, 20 preschoolers, wow. so. Okay. So when you're talking about adaptations mm -hmm. um, for Hannah, what adaptations do you, do you have to make? Um, well, let's start, um, since we're talking about school, um, let's talk about the school. What adaptations, environmental adaptations, visual adaptations do you have to make for Hannah? We um, have to, you know, remove the visual clutter, which um, we do with, you know, putting uh, black fabric on the walls. Um, this year, she's, uh, they had a, a pretty large closet in the room that sort of has become Hannah's vision center. Okay. And um, the lighting is very controlled. Uh, the um, auditory clutter is very controlled. If you can shut the door if it's too loud, you can leave it open to um, let natural light in, um, and it just seems to be a 
a good place for Hannah this year. Okay. So, um, what about like the things that she's actually, the materials and things that she's using? So besides like um, using the black backgrounds and mm -hmm. controlling the lighting, um, do you have to use certain okay. colors with her? Do you have to, um, you know, present them a certain way for her? I mean, how, how do you? We are, she prefers reds and yellows. Okay. Uh, if it's a lighted, illuminated object, she likes, she prefers red. If it's shiny and we're shining a light on it, she prefers yellow. Uh, we do have to present these from the left viewing field. Um, and then she will uh, most times track to midline if she's having a pretty good day. Um, she uses switches with adapted um, toys, with adapted uh, pouring cups and things that she can help uh, the other kids in the room do things and they help her in turn. Um, what kind of switches is she using? Uh, she's using a, I think it's a jelly button switch and a, a, a toggle switch, okay. like a joystick switch. Um, we, they're head switches. We um, found that she lear has learned the cause and effect better with those than she has, uh, than she did with uh, hand switches. Okay. Um, um, so you're presenting things from the left, um, mm -hmm. so reds and yellows. Will okay. she look at other colors? Yes, she will look at blues and greens. And we have found from Halloween that she does like orange. Uh, she went to a haunted house at school <laughs> and she loved the jack-o'-lanterns there. And it was so noisy, it was just not a place you would expect her to be, uh, be visually interested. And she did wonderful, they said so. Were they lit up? Yes. They were lit. Yes. Okay. Um, so, how close do things need to be for Hannah to see them in general, do you feel? We, it, we first start out about six inches from her face. Okay. Uh, and some days she will uh, go as far as 12 inches. Uh, that's uh, something that we've uh, um, worked on and gotten to around 12 inches on, on some days. Mm -hmm. so. Do you ever feel like um, if you're walking at home, mm -hmm. so in a familiar place that she's been over and over and repeatedly, um, she ever notices you walking? Yes, I do feel that. If, if, it's the, if it's the sound of the footsteps, I'm not sure. She will glance towards where I'm at how far away, maybe, would um, you be? Beyond 12 inches? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she, she maybe visually will notice you in a familiar place beyond 12 maybe inches? Maybe the shadows, yes. Maybe. So maybe. how far would you say, from in a familiar place, mm. could she pick up a, a larger moving target, such as a person moving? Just generally, I mean, do you feel 4 feet, 6 feet, 10 feet? Um, maybe four. four that feet. might be a, a an Ass accurate, yeah, assessment. Like to catch. To just catch, yeah. The movement right. of you. Right. Right. So to catch a moving person, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it would have to be at home. Could she do that at school? You think? Or. I believe that maybe she could for a particular for her aid or for uh, a particular therapist that she enjoys seeing them or someone she knows mm -hmm. okay it's good um how does she do if we're talking about unfamiliar places so when you take her to i mean stores or restaurants or maybe places that she's been but not consistent places for her how does she react to places like that she has a lot of uh, rabbit head movement okay. when you go into a new place I don't really notice her focusing on anything unless someone approaches her to talk to her. And then she might respond to their voice and look towards them. Okay. Uh, I'm not completely 100% positive that she would, you know, focus on them and really be seeing them since if they're a stranger. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're someone that she knows and that she sees every day, then, she, you know, she very well could be um, visually responding to them. Uh, 
but if she's, um, if they're just speaking to her just to be, you know, a good person, then I'm not sure. Does she get fussy? Does she fall asleep? Do you notice any behavior changes when you go out into different environments? Actually, she she would get more. I would say she gets more wound up. She's more a little up. more okay. alert. More alert. with the different. And the lighting is you know a big an issue with her. If the okay. if the store, you know, you wouldn't think a store would be a good place for her to see or, but she seems to be more alert. And I don't know. The temperature probably has a lot to do with it. Um, so like the fluorescent lighting, like mm -hmm. in Walmart right. or shopping right. stores, and does it bother her? No, she no. likes it. Yes. Does she like eggs? No. She just seems to be attracted. to Right. Them. Yes. Okay. Can she be? So she's attracted to the light, and obviously, when you said she really likes lighted objects and prefers certain colors if they're lit up, mm -hmm. but can she be redirected from the light? Like, for example, when you take her into the store or in certain rooms that are lit up, you know, and you want her to look at something, can she be redirected oh, yes. from mm -hmm. the lit? Okay. Yes. Uh, if I show her a toy or something or uh, ask her something, she'll, she can, uh, she'll hit her switches if she's, um, you know, in response, if I have a certain uh, anything uh, certain that I want her to say. Then um, the one time we were somewhere and I told her we were getting ready to go and I had it's time to go on her switch. And she'd hit her switch and I'd say, okay, we're gonna go in just a minute. And she'd wait about a minute and she'd hit her switch again. And I'd say, okay, Hannah, we're almost done and we'll go in just a minute. And she'd wait about another minute. And I finally started timing her and it was <laughs> about exactly a minute. And she'd hit her switch again. and. <laughs> So it was it was interesting to see, you know, her respond like that. You know, you told me we were leaving, right. and we're not gone yet. Oh, so. Um, <laughs> so, um, what about um, movement? Um, when you're showing objects to her, I mean, you talked about um, some lighted things that she likes, um, things that are reflective. Do you need to move the objects for her to see them, to gain her attention to them, or do you? Most things, yes. Most um, things. Movement is a motivator for her. Is a motivator. Okay. Do, does we, she like, I'm sorry, go ahead. We have pom-poms and different things that we shake okay. that uh, their sound, uh, she seems to notice them more when the light reflects off of them okay. and uh, the sound of them. Do you have concerns um, about how she's seeing overall? I mean, you seem to really know your child very well. You know Hannah well, and you know how she's seeing well. <laughs> I try. I try to do the best I can for her. Um, of course, with the CVI, I'm going to have concerns on how she sees. Uh, as far as her seeing, like her objects and things. No, I've seen growth mm -hmm. uh, in her of working with her at home for several years with uh, her diagnosis, and um, I. That's a really uh, tough question, I think, uh, just for the fact that, of course, I have concerns because of the CVI. Right. But you know, other than. If we're just speaking on CVI characteristics, then uh, as of the growth that I've seen, then no. So with the so. progress that you've seen, can I ask you, what do you feel is attributed to the progress? Oh, definitely. Besides the fact that obviously you know your child well, and you know you've. I know that consistency. I've every training, every seminar that I've been to, consistency is the key. And I am fully, I fully believe that it is through the help of, or through the therapies, the vision therapies that she's gotten, uh, the uh, uh, 
taking out the visual clutter, the, the black background, her, her aide, her therapist that do work with her vision in a uh, visually, um, a non-visually cluttered back room, mm -hmm. I really feel that that has uh, benefited her the most in, uh, in her growth, in her progress uh, with vision. And then it sounds like what you're doing is you're taking these things and you're incorporating them into everything that you're doing with her throughout the day, like into the switches that you're using. And yes. what about like in her daily routines? Everything is red or yellow. Okay. Uh, she has a red spoon that she uses for lunch. Uh, okay. And she also has a maroon spoon. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, um, we have a red bowl, a red plate, a red cup. Her locker has... Um, a red um, koosh ball on where the handle is to know that that's her locker, um, her cubby, everything is red or yellow in the um, in her environment. Okay. Wonderful. So red or yellow. Yes. Still are the colors. Okay. And so she can. Um, just want to make sure I'm understanding well on this. With auditory, I know you're still controlling mm -hmm. environmental stimuli and things like that, competing things. Right. Can she still tolerate, is she able to tolerate, if you're trying to get her to look at something mm -hmm. and there's people talking in the background, can mm -hmm. she, will she still look at what you're trying? If, if she, if the room is controlled visually, then she will respond visually with some some light auditory background noise. Okay, some light. Um, she, she will still view things. Um, and we tried to, uh, last year her room was so full and busy that we used, uh, I know her therapist used cotton balls to help with the, um, to reduce the auditory uh, Stimulation, the you know, because she would she would shut down she completely. Shuts down. Yeah. And how do you know when she's shutting down? Like, what does she do? She, she closes just, her she eyes, closes and her she'll eyes just and either go to sleep or she will close her eyes and play possum. Um, a lot of times, I think that's just so she'll get her way. And but so you know, when she's looking at something, she has a direct yes, gaze a direct it. gaze you on know, it. Yes. No question. Okay. So basically. Um, She'll shut down when she's overstimulated, but you also said sometimes with the lights, but the, the, that's not an overstimulation though. That's alerting her. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, does she ever look into faces? I think that she looks into familiar faces. Okay. Mine, her aides. Uh, her grandmothers, people that are face to face with her every day, um, maybe some of her therapists that she's uh, gotten to know a little better. Okay. Um, I I fully feel that she recognizes my face. Um, Jennifer, what are your hopes for Hannah? She's made so much progress and over the last few years and. You know, we anticipate more progress to come. What What do you hope for her? My hope is that she will in continue to make more progress, to uh, be able to survive as a child with CVI, um, hopefully gain uh, or make more progress towards losing some more of the characteristics of CVI, to uh, to hopefully uh, gain more muscle control to be able to sit up on her own to her first words would be nice. Well, I can't wait to meet her. <laughs> I'm very excited. Thank you very, very much for sharing your story with me. Thank I really you. I appreciate it.